Hi, I'm Corey Locke, Special Projects Editor with Xconomy. I'm here today with David Edwards of Harvard University, and we're here to talk about the future of food and eating. Thanks so much, David, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Uh, I was wondering if you could start by just uh, telling us a little bit about uh, your research. Yeah, my background is uh, actually implied in math, and uh, early on in drug delivery, I did a lot of work um, related to inhaled insulin and inhaled drugs and vaccines uh, um, in, uh, in the late 90s and early 2000s. And in the middle 2000s, I became very interested, for reasons that we will perhaps talk about, in um, a different kind of health delivery, and particularly health delivery through sensory stimulation, particularly food, but not just food, and have been focused on, on that, on developing new uh, food forms and sensory environments to guide human health uh, and wellness. Mm. So what are you working on now? What's new? Well, my latest project uh, relates to scent. Uh, since my early work in inhaled insulin, I've been very interested in delivering health and wellness through the air. And so the ultimate uh, project for me is uh, designing scent uh, to uh, condition um, human health and wellness, and particularly eating. Uh, so uh, as you may know, the last uh, 15 years have been uh, a remarkable period of uh, biological advancement in the understanding of olfaction. And we understand now that olfactory receptors, which represent the largest subclass of the human genome, have play a major role in uh, many uh, biological processes, of course, but also in human metabolism. And so as that has advanced, it's become clear that if we deliver scent in a wiser way than has been possible today, of course, scent, unlike light and sound, has not been digitized, and so it's still delivered with candles and, and, uh, and perfumes and in ways that we've been using for um, literally thousands of years, uh, there's a major opportunity uh, for uh, not only um, eating, uh, but uh, communication more generally. So I created a company called O-Notes uh, a few years ago, and uh, we're right now in a fascinating uh, dialogue and partnership with uh, Denny Osiello at MGH and, um, and uh, Ram Nick Xavier at the Broad Institute, and looking into how we can use this new digital platform with frontier biological research related to the gut microbiome, olfactory receptors, and food cravings uh, to uh, interrogate uh, olfactory receptors in the nose either through sniffing, if you will, or orthonasal scent delivery, or retronasal scent delivery, which is actually flavor. The concept of flavor is really uh, mostly uh, a matter of uh, stimulating the olfactory receptors through exhaling, actually. So we're looking into how to do that, how to deliver scent one way or the other, uh, connected to a quantitative understanding of human phenotype so that we can deliver scent smartly and help guide um, food behavior and, and, uh, and human wellness more generally. Mm. So we're talking about um, engineering scents into foods to make them more palatable for people, you know, well, healthier food? In, in a way, we're talking about designing foods better. Um, and, but not only food, also the receptacles in which we eat food and the environment uh, in which we eat food. We understand now that food is more than the material that we place in our mouth, even though I've, obviously scent plays a big role in the experience of that food, uh, but also the sensory environment that conditions us prior to eating, during, when we eat, and after we eat. And so how do you design that environment? We know quite a bit about light and sound at this point and its effect on eating, but we're just starting to learn a lot about scent. And so the digitization of scent, which we've uh, worked on and now uh, accomplished here over the last few years, uh, allows us to bring the kind of thinking that has been uh, quite uh, preponderant for the last years with regard to light and sound uh, to scent for um, the purposes of uh, controlling metabolism. Mm. And you're also working on new kinds of food products, right, for, that are more sustainable? Absolutely. So this general interest in uh, the future of food obviously gets back to, well, where does food come from and how sustainable is it and uh, how adapted is it to our contemporary lives and what happens when it's done actually what about the refuse of food so we over the last years have developed a food platform uh, with a company called incredible foods here in boston uh, the company has a lead product called perfectly free which is in um, thousands of stores here on the east coast right now it's a uh, missing the major food allergen, top eight uh, food allergens, and, uh, and um, has been in stores for the last couple of years. We're coming out with a new food uh, uh, 
platform, uh, which is uh, based on fruit, any fruit uh, in the form of a grape with an edible skin uh, like a grape. And so it turns out that kids are not eating fruit anymore, uh, largely because it's complicated and parents are worried about the skin. And so we can now make any f from a pineapple to a banana in the form of a, a little grape, which is uh, completely um, uh, uh, composed of fruit. And the skin, uh, like a grape skin, is more than simply a nice, delicious coating, if you will. It's all natural, but it's also a barrier to gas and water transfer. And so we uh, are launching this uh, in Q1 of 2018, um, uh, these perfectly free uh, fruit bites. And uh, in that context, just here in a few days, uh, we're opening what's called the World Frontiers Forum. It's the first uh, forum of its kind. Uh, in partnership with MIT and Harvard, a number of other uh, organizations, and uh, and uh, uh, presenting uh, on Friday actually, a uh, food form which is made with this technology, uh, which uh, tastes like a hot dog. It looks like a hot dog, but it's completely vegetable based, and it's wrapped in edible skins of mustard and relish. Oh wow, that sounds great. So these uh, little fruit pops and these veggie dogs, is it something that you can just throw in a kid's lunchbox? Yeah, or absolutely. So you picnic can, basket yeah, or something? So this is one of the interesting things about the future of food. The future of food is partly, as we're saying, engineering and thinking about the environment, but it's also, well, how does the food get to us? And so it's retail, it's distribution, and it's a food system that works really well today, but it's based on uh, practices that we understand now are not so sustainable. And so one of the uh, ways that you can actually um, uh, purchase and distribute these uh, products is like you do or used to grapes and so it's possible to grab the these little uh, fruit uh, grapes and drop them into a little thermos and wash them when you get home and and uh, without packaging but the reality is that they're selling right now in stores uh, in boxes and uh, with uh, traditional labeling and uh, and anyway parents then place the fruit in the refrigerator and then can drop the fruit in their kids uh, lunchbox and they're uh, like like grapes they're they're uh, good and delicious uh, all day long wow that sounds interesting so we've talked about uh, kind of new kinds of food products and then uh, new ways of kind of consuming and, and, and sensing the food. So how do the two kind of come together in your vision for the future of, of food and eating? So I think what's happening, um, if we look 10 years, 20, 30 years in uh, the future, the future of food is the future of healthcare, is in a way the future of communication. I think that all of them are uh, converging uh, in a future of human wellness. I think in the future that our uh, wearables and devices and things that we carry with us will be uh, monitoring us in ways that we um, are um, delighted with and that information is informing how we eat and how we eat is guiding our health. I think that that information uh, is part of a already today is part of a natural biological uh, feedback system that our bodies have uh, but because of the really radical ways in which we've changed uh, our environment uh, over the last years for many many really positive reasons uh, we now need to think uh, much more coherently about uh, how we eat and how it connects to these different um, healthcare and, and uh, communication um, industries really. So more specifically, my expectation is that, of course, work that we're doing, but work many other companies here in Boston and around the United States and around the world are doing right now for finding new ways of uh, generating food, uh, whether it's uh, from uh, bioengineering or by uh, uh, re-engineering microbiome of plants, uh, to um, ways in which we can uh, eliminate or diminish uh, plastic uh, packaging, uh, to these new kinds of food forms, uh, for example, um, in possible foods, um, like our company Incredible Foods, but much exclusively focused on this notion of eliminating uh, uh, beef from the uh, from the um, the, the food uh, um, uh, chain. Uh, these companies are uh, going to radically change how we eat uh, for sure in the future. And uh, and I and as I say, I think that this uh, advancement will be accompanying an advancement in wearables and in uh, digital health that all kind of merge together. 
Great. Do you see any um, kind of challenges or barriers to, to getting there? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, there's partly, of course, technological, but I think, honestly, we're getting to a point where the bigger barriers relate to consumer behavior. We're moving outside of the regulatory environment where it was uh, it, and is possible to impose a uh, behavior uh, uh, given a medical prescription and a pharmaceutical um, 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 product. Uh, but as we move into a consumer practice, uh, we're counting on consumers adopting willingly um, and, and not simply a small group, but a mass uh, population adopting new behavior. And I think it will require engineers and scientists and um, companies and, and uh, restaurants and all of us to listen well actually, and to be uh, adapting our uh, innovations, uh, not only so that they work and they're sustainable, but that they're adoptable and uh, embraced by, uh, by people. Okay, well that was all very interesting. I look forward to seeing how food and eating are going to change. Well, thank you.